Situation, which is from our situation point of view very difficult to understand because, um, yeah, I mean, invading another country or well, you know, another country, this is what my question, but, um, is very extreme. Uh, but I can also understand if you live in fear and terror your entire life, you need to act on something. Well, I do know of a perception of Israel, but not. I don't, I'm not quite sure if it's the correct perception. If it's really what, how it is like there. Well, basically, look look back uh, to to Roman age and our age right now. What actually has changed in in the way we express ourselves? Pretty much nothing. I'm never I'm never for the war. I, no matter what the circumstances. I don't like war. So. <laughs> I don't even want to know what is causing the problem, but the important thing is I think there is a better way of solving problems than war. So, because it's really bad. Countries that have had wars before are really bad shit. So, I am not in support of war, no matter what it is. How often do you uh, read or listen to the news? Um, every morning I watch the, yeah, the morning news to wake up. <laughs> Uh, yeah, during the day when I'm working on the laptop, sometimes I search around the internet for news sites, but not that often. Yeah, I don't have a TV at home, so mostly through the internet. So not as regular as I want to. <laughs> Here in the Netherlands? Which news? Dutch news or what? <laughs> no, uh, in the internet. <laughs> okay, sometimes I watch CNN every day. Yeah, almost every evening. Uh, uh, each uh, two days. Uh, okay. Do you uh, usually read the headlines and then decide what to read, or uh, you uh, just look in the, in the chronological order? Well, uh, the front paper, I, I always read the front page, and uh, but further on in the papers, I read the headlines. And uh, yeah. But I, I do it selectively, so I, if I find the title interesting, I will read it, and for the rest, I will uh, leave it for what it, is, for what it is. Really depends on how much time I spend it. Like if you watch the eight o'clock news, you don't really have a choice in what you watch because it's well, basically decided for you. But if you watch uh, the paper, well, then, then it depends on how much time you have to, to spend. Because usually I just read the headlines, and then if I see something interesting, yeah, then I read it. How would you decide if it's interesting or not? Uh, well, uh, if 
the sub subject or the topic uh, relates to me, whether I already know something about it or whether it just is interesting. Oh, that's a difficult mm -hmm. question. It really depends on the moment, but may, uh, yeah. Ooh, how can you define that? Um, well, a catching title is of course interesting, and of course something like, like you wanted to know about Israel. Well, that situation is somewhat interesting. Not always. I mean, sometimes once, once uh, in the three days, I, I read something about it, and, and then it still depends on whether I have time for it. But on the eight o'clock news, it's always pretty much a subject. So, well, you inadvertently always follow it. Yeah, this is always difficult because, uh, well, I, I, I read a book by Joris Leijendijk about uh, the, the situation in around Palestine and Israel. And his angle was about news coverage. And that made me realize that how, how little I actually know about the way these articles are written and what is um, yeah, uh, left out. For better on for a better understanding, but that these things which are left out are also quite crucial for a more balanced view on the situation. Um, so, yeah, on, on the yeah on the whole Israel-Palestina question is very confusing for me about uh, about their current uh, policies. What are their current policies? <laughs> That's the problem. I, I don't have uh, enough intimate knowledge of their policies. But only I know the only thing I know is what I see in the news, and the only thing I see in the news is uh, people bombing other people and blood and, and guts and gore. And that's the only thing I, I, I see every day in the news, and uh, I don't think I, uh, I have the correct perception of Israel, but it's the only perception I have. Uh. Well, it wasn't exactly asked very nicely towards the Palestinian when, when the country was created, basically. So it was more like the Americans said, like, oh, you can have this part of uh, the desert, and, and like, oh, we're not going to ask these, these sand people because they don't really care or they don't have an opinion. And then Israel, uh, yeah, well, basically started there, almost immediately starting a war. It's getting so, I guess, um, part of their life in Israel that. Oh, my trying to... Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what to think about it. Just so messed up. starting opinion, for me at least. So then you would say that um, this perception uh, is negative or positive? Or none, it's also. I, I have a quite negative perception, I think, at the moment. Oh, well, you stole my marbles, I'm going to steal your marbles. And we'll just keep on doing that <laughs> until the end of time. Well, I think they're doing right in the sense that it's, it's logical that they want to do something about it because they are being bombarded every day or bombarded the rockets shut out of the Gaza. And so in that sense they are right to do something about it, but it's not the way, I think. The, no, the measures they are taking, are, you know, I, I do not agree with what, the, the way they have reacted on this. But what would you say that you have a different way of reacting to this? No, I'm, I'm saying, uh, yeah, well, it's easy to say violence is never the solution. And that's why I'm saying that in those extreme situations I would not know how to act. I can only look at them from, you know, cozy Holland. Or yet, you know, we haven't had a war in the last two, 60 years, 70 years. And, um, and from that point of view, I, yeah, I, 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 I condemn the violence.